should be down the next few days. Could that be a game changer, Manny, in terms of delaying uh, a vote? Uh, you know, I do think that there, a vote, delaying a vote, I think that there is uh, already in the offing the possibility of delaying the hearings from July 13th uh, probably to the following week. Uh, I don't think that that particular decision is going to be a game changer uh, in combination with other issues. The fact, I think the, the fact that Pearl Diff and others are uh, holding back documents, that's a justifiable uh, hearing delay. Well, explain that a little bit. The Puerto Rican Legal Defense and Education Fund, she was on the board making legal decisions as to what cases they'd be involved in for 12 years or so. Uh, she initially submitted to the, to the Judiciary Committee nothing after a group exposed the fact there was a memo out where she opposed the death penalty. She submitted that late and subsequently submitted three or four or five documents that are non-substantive. There's nothing else from her tenure there. Yeah. Apparently, the Judiciary Committee, uh, particularly the minority, actually both. It was a, a request by the chairman and the ranking member to Pearl Liv to uh, give up uh, documentation that indicated, uh, showed uh, her role in some of these uh, decisions. Now, I don't know whether Pearl Liv is arguing an attorney-client privilege. I don't think that they can because I think she was a board member participating in these Rather than not not, a, not not an attorney, uh, that which was of course uh, the the reason why uh, Miguel Estrada's documents from the Justice Department were not given over randomly uh, with bipartisan support. They weren't given over randomly. But so uh, tr um, tradition uh, suggests that when there are there's material out there, uh, both Democrats and Republicans. Uh, uh, I'll, will be convinced that there needs to be a delay. So I think that that could be used as the justification by Democrats to delay the hearings uh, when, in fact, it's probably going to be a, a barter uh, of delayed hearings for an early pre-August vote. But, but they'll use that as a justification. I can see that. Kirk, do you have any ideas on the tactics and strategy over... Well, you know, I'm not so much concerned with uh, with when the hearings happen. Um, I'm actually more concerned with the time after the hearings, because like I said, I think um, she's going to say some controversial things. Um, she's going to try to defend. It's just not her nature to uh, to back off some of the controversial statements. And I particularly, so so I certainly want time for a full and a fair debate over the things she says at the hearing. But I also, frankly, want senators to have to go home for the long August recess and face their constituents. Um, a lot of those red state con um, senators, you know, in their home, they talk about social issues in a very conservative way. But, you know, then in Washington, they vote for a nominee who will undoubtedly uh, say that gay marriage is a constitutional right but doesn't believe that the Second Amendment is a uh, is a con is an individual constitutional right and I'd like to them and 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 really people from senators from all over the, the ideological spectrum have to defend this to their constituents that's how the democratic process should work and if they can defend it honestly to their constituents and come back and vote for her in September then she deserves to be confirmed well I think the reason they put the hearing on July 13th and seeking a pre-August vote is because they don't want to do this. Uh, if it were a normal nomination, she, uh, frankly, under the Clinton administration, they did have normal Supreme Court nominations in the sense that uh, you had extremely liberal nominees put forward, but the timing was, uh, you know, was lengthy in terms of a, a discussion. Uh, she wouldn't get a vote till September. Uh, but uh, they're afraid. They're afraid of accountability here. And... Uh, uh, and I and I don't think uh, conservatives are, are honest Republicans, and 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 you know this is a, a key issue. Uh, you know the concern is that there will not be the fight has been over whether a filibuster, not to deny in the end a vote, an opportunity for the Senate to have its voice heard, but a filibuster to provide enough time for this sort of discussion that we're talking about. You know my understanding is that you don't have enough Republicans who would even support that. Yeah, I think that there are this uh, what I would call the frankly the McCain streak. Uh, the McCain streak. Uh, he used to have more companions. They've all been voted out of office now. Uh, but uh, you know the guys that I used to refer to as the too cool for school. 
you know, they were just too cool for school on the issue of judges. It wasn't their issue. And, uh, and, and now McCain is, is relatively solitary, and, but he's got a couple others that sometimes will be convinced that, you know, this just doesn't, this is, it just isn't a great issue for a senator. I mean, we've got to do, here in the Senate, we should be doing national security issues and, uh, and, and great legislative items like, uh, like the Kennedy McCain uh, immigration reform, or you know, those are the things that uh, we should be doing. Judges, who cares? Well, Senator finally became president, and after forty-five years or so, and uh, so they all start thinking about it on both sides of the aisle. Yeah, but unfortunately, among Republicans, uh, uh, the conference is, is uh, swayed from time to time by people who just don't think this is worth uh, a lot of time. In fact, I've got that in writing. I'm working on that article right now that, uh, where they make statements like that. So that is, the, uh, that is the unfortunate situation, that Republicans want to get rid of this nomination because they want to go on to other things. They don't think it's paying, it'll be a payoff for them. I, when I say Republicans, I, I, let's say half. Of the, of the conference, I would bet. Uh, there are others who understand this issue. As, I, as I've recently said, you kind of have to understand the Republican senators sort of like in the way that you used to stare, you know, in school, in grammar school, you used to stare at that chart about when the various dinosaurs, you know, are buried, the different layers, the Pliocene or the Miocene and all that, whatever it is. And, and that's how you have to understand where, not only where, where they come from, but also when they were elected. Was this an issue at the time of their election? And so there are, there's about a dozen senators for whom this was an issue at the time of their election. They're very sensitive to this issue. Uh, and they're not all on the Judiciary Committee. But then you've got others, including red state senators, who just, this issue just doesn't play well, in part because we've never, we've never sent emails into Kentucky. We've never done radio, radio ad buys in Tennessee and Kentucky. And so our leadership from Tennessee and Kentucky and Arizona just don't, really value this issue as much as others do. Well, you know, Judicial Watch is a grassroots organization, and, you know, uh, uh, our, our, our members are concerned about it. We've had uh, uh, lots of email about it, and uh, uh, I think uh, everyone would do well to pay attention to the grassroots on this. And, and uh, you know, there are a lot of conservative <laughs> groups that are not, uh, 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 that don't have the level of grassroots support, not for one of trying, but uh, uh, there's no doubt uh, that the grassroots are concerned about this, but they don't have an effective voice in Washington, uh, certainly in the Senate or, or uh, anywhere else yet, and uh, or a voice that's being heard, to be fair to Senator Sessions, who is trying to uh, bring these issues up in a, a regular way. But he, he's a lone wolf in many regards there, unfortunately, for him. Roger, did you have any input there or thoughts on, on the stat tactics and strategy of vote timing and filibusters and such? No, I, uh, you know, I, I, def I defer to you, to you all on on that. Um, again, I'll just say that um, I think that the, the the issues that are likely to be front and center at the uh, at the hearings are are good issues for us. Um, you know, there's a recent poll by Quinnipiac College on the issue of racial preferences, and it's you know, just uh, overwhelming majority of Americans think that. When you apply for a job or to, to get into a college or uh, bid on a contract, that your race and ethnicity and sex just should not matter. Including 75% of African Americans. Absolutely. This is not a, uh, this is not a red state, blue state, um, black, white issue. This is, a, this, this is a, a core issue that I think all Americans, or not all, but just about you know, every American except for Judge Sotomayor and a few others, uh, you know, agree on. And... Uh, yeah, it's it's. Um, uh, I, I think we should welcome having that issue, um, having a teaching moment on on that issue, because be part after, of the Senate Judiciary. Because after hearings. all, the Attorney General thinks that we're cowards not to debate yeah, it. So, yeah. so we might as well debate yeah. it. We should, we should bravely debate it. Well, uh, one of my colleagues in the office said the Ricky case is about a about whether you can engage in racial discrimination to avoid lawsuits against on racial discrimination, right. uh, and that's what affirmative action is in the end. In the end, uh, any other questions? Yes. what you want me to do, and that applies to all of you, 